Now, let's talk about nuclear energy and the federal Liberal MP, LMP uh, Member of Parliament, who says nuclear is the safest of all forms of energy. Ted O'Brien joins me now live from Brisbane. Thanks for joining us, Ted. Uh, why, how, where's your evidence to tell us that nuclear energy is the safest? That's going to send the, the Green left falling off their chairs. Well, look, Chris, it might, but uh, I have to say, when I found this out, and we found it out during a recent parliamentary inquiry, uh, I was surprised myself. And um, it actually comes from MIT in the United States, and it accounts for every possible energy source you can imagine. Um, coal, uh, gas, uh, wind, solar, oil, and what it says, um, including consideration for the likes of uh, Fukushima and Chernobyl incidents, that actually nuclear is the safest source of energy in the world. They had this very morbid phrase of a, a death rate, uh, basically a mortality index. And, uh, and sure enough, um, it says nuclear is the cleanest. And so uh, it surprised me. But, you know, for me, Chris, the real insight here is not that nuclear is safe and clean, but rather the disparity, the divergence between people's perception and the evidence. Yeah, I'll come back to that now, in a second. Just I on that safe... If you walk down the street and ask the average punter, they wouldn't be saying it. Well, no, but although I think if people... You know, you think of having a nuclear energy plant in your neighbourhood compared to having a coal-fired power station in your neighbourhood, I know which one's going to have the biggest impact on you. I do recall when you talk about this safety thing, one of my favourite ever cartoons from 20 or more years ago, I wish I could track it down, but it had, like, a caveman... Uh, first off, it had the person who invented uh, nuclear energy and they're, they're saying, oh, you know, this is a great form of energy, but it could cost a lot of lives. And next to them, they had a caveman who just chiselled out the first wheel. So this, this thing looks kind of handy, but another bloke says, oh, yeah, it might cost a lot of lives. Yeah, well, this is just it. And, you know, you can go back to the Godzilla movie. You can go to, to The Simpsons. Um, this has been a part of pop culture nuclear, and unfortunately it's always been negative. And this is, this is the problem we have had in some of the energy debate. Um, there's too much false logic out there. Um, what we need to do, and this is why the government's new um, roadmap, the technology investment roadmap, is so important, because it basically says, look, forget the ideology, forget all the wind and puff on this, Let's actually stick to the evidence. And now we have an opportunity that we haven't had before, and that is to ensure that we have about 140 different technologies on the table, and that includes new and emerging nuclear technology, and that's the small modular reactors in particular, Chris, and that's where it gets really exciting. Yeah, well, it's fascinating stuff, and you're going to look at this, and so we should. It's, I'm often amazed by how little focus there is on nuclear from the green left, from the climate activists, because if ever there's a problem that has a silver bullet, it is the generation of, uh, you know, the fixed generation of electricity and getting rid of emissions. If you really want to do it, nuclear is your obvious available option in the here and now. It's a zero emissions baseload technology, Chris. So you're right. There's been two big game changes in this. Number one, um, it's been climate change. And so the more that we need to reduce emissions, the more that nuclear comes into play. And the second big game changer is technology. And so people sometimes picture these big old smokestacks when they think about nuclear technology. We're not interested in that. No one wants the old Soviet era technology. Now we're looking at small modular reactors, which should be coming off the factory shelf in the mid 2020s. So these things aren't built on site, they're built in factories. Um, they are put on the back of a truck and they are taken to site, they're plugged in. Um, they have the ability to go to remote and regional areas. They can fire up towns, you know, producing electricity for small towns. They can desalinate water. Um, this technology, especially the new and emerging technologies that the government has put on the table for consideration, um, is, uh, is, is one of the possibilities for us to ensure that we continue to decarbonise the economy while making sure that we get cheaper electricity so we keep competitive 
and we keep our industries competitive internationally and we deliver jobs. Yeah, and ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, can't wait to see more of the debate, more information come into play. I mean, if the nuclear energy was so scary, none of us would be uh, going to France for holidays for a starter, not to mention a bunch of other countries. Just on the energy yeah, debate... Gets excited about the champagne... Yeah, if yeah. anyone gets excited about that Champagne region, Chris, in France, rest assured there are nuclear plants all around that place. Yep. No one's complaining. Um, no, no one's complaining. The, the only CO2 is inside the Champagne bottles. Now, uh, just on this, uh, your colleague, your Queensland senatorial colleague, Matt Canavan, says it's time for Australia to get out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Is he right? Look, we are committed to the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, and if Australia has a reputation for anything, it is that uh, we don't welch on our deals. Now, as far as I'm concerned, we are going to kick it um, right through the ballpark. We're going to be fine with 2030 and meeting our targets. Um, and we're going to make sure we do it with a balanced mix. And that mix includes coal. That mix includes gas in particular, by the way, given we now have about 21% of renewables, uh, we need the dispatchability uh, particularly of gas. So it's important for the whole lot. Um, I think, you know, we are going to... We met Kyoto 1, we're going to beat Kyoto 2, we'll beat Paris, um, and we will do it in a canter. Um, we just need now right. to so, focus on the technology. So it's a slap down to Matt Canavan? No, not at all. Matt is an important colleague and he has demonstrable expertise in energy. And um, what Matt has been on the record for that I think has supported oh, oh. the vast majority of people is, is, is coal um, and making right. sure coal All and right. gas oh. continue to play a role. I have to cut you off. Sorry, uh, Ted O'Brien. I appreciate that. Thanks You're for your right. time.